All right. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a uh, Tuesday night, right? Tuesday night, November 12th, 2024 is the date. 1023 p.m. California time. A little bit of activity here in Southern California, lighting up on the map in the last hour with some earthquake activity across the Imperial Fault up towards the San Andreas Fault, seeing a small amount of earthquake activity uptick. Uh, nothing big going on out there across the uh, California area for now. Just a couple twos. Uh, some minimal movement up here across the San Francisco area. 2.3 uh, from today. And, um, you know, aside from that, California, it looks like any given day out here. Not seeing a whole lot of movement across the Portland area. A little 2.2. Uh, 14 miles deep for that quake. I want to check out the trimmer map out here tonight. See what we have for Cascadia trimmer. Uh, 291 is the epicenter number. Uh, most of it down here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Um, so some slight uptick. I, I guess this is a little bit less than what we've seen here yesterday. Uh, yesterday's event. Uh, well, I take that back. I was 79. I, I know one of these days it was a little bit elevated. I think it was uh, yeah, on the 10th. We've seen uh, about 546 epicenters. So most of it has been down here across the southern end of the Cascadia. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity showing up here on the map uh, for now. But uh, as always, definitely want to watch that. Uh, a couple of smaller quakes here outside of the Mount Rainier region. And uh, Yellowstone. Let's see what's going on over there across the Yellowstone overview. Uh, seismograph layout here of Yellowstone National Park. Super volcano. There's the caldera there in the black outline. Not a whole lot uh, at all going on out there across Yellowstone. A couple small, very small earthquakes there, but those are probably about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 in the magnitude level. Very small. Uh, the rest of the country out here, as you can see, fairly quiet. Haven't seen anything uh, on the uptick uh, since this morning's update. Off the coast here of Mexico, a little bit of movement stirring up here at the northern end of the Middle American Trench. Um, aside from that, let's see what we got here. Not a whole lot in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, I'm not seeing a whole lot between that five pointer there in Mexico up towards the California area. It's fairly absent of movement for now. Uh, let's see what else we got. A little bit more active out here across this area of the world with a, uh, a trail of deep earthquakes here surrounding the, well, looks like the Papua New Guinea area. Got these rings raised off the globe there, indicating some deep earthquakes. So we got them lined up here and also to the east here along the plate boundary. That leaves this zone right here in the middle, absent of earthquake activity. So I'm sure this is going to fill in uh, overnight with this, um, the way this movement's looking here on the map. Uh, definitely want to watch that. The Papua New Guinea area should get uh, a little bit of earthquake activity overnight here. We'll, we'll definitely watch for some further movement. Uh, five pointer, super deep activity up here across the, um, go over here to the map and see where we're at outside of, uh, well, Eastern Afghanistan. It looks like 5.137 miles deep for that, uh, super deep quake. Also another one back here across the Himalayas. So, uh, I'm starting to see a lot more deeper activity here on the globe than the normal. Uh, and, and when that happens, normally we'll see a uptick and earthquake activity around the region so as you can see it's pretty much all over the place out here across this area of the world now uh, even into the japan area seeing a lot of deeper movement so things are probably going to get uh, active out here real soon also across the mediterranean seeing their share of some deeper earthquake movements south sandwich trench 5.1 coming in a couple hours ago uh, aside from that uh, movement there in mexico and middle america trench Aside from that five-pointer, it looks like some forest stirring up down there today in that region. Hawaii, let's go see what's going on out there on the uh, the Big Island. Getting that trail of earthquake activity leading off here towards the uh, uh, Loihi Seamount area again. Nothing major going on there, but uh, I do want to double-check the volcano maps here. See if anything has changed. Uh, deformation data is this back online yet let's take a look it's not i don't know what's going on but every 24 hours or so we get this error reading 
And this whole thing is an error. It's not recording anything. If you look on the last two days, it's identical. Every single day it looks like this. And that's a, a computer issue. And uh, it's been down since, uh, well, over 30 days now uh, with no no measurements going on there. So everything's offline. Even though we got data coming in, that's not accurate. Uh, there's no, been no ups or downs. No, you know, it's just consistent data coming in. And with these amplitudes here at that small, we should see some wavy lines out there indicating inflation and deflation. But uh, everything's offline here. Um, so I'm not for sure when they're going to get that back up and running uh, because that's not accurate. Let's check out uh, some seismograph stations out here, see if there's anything. Uh... Well, there's a tilt meter out here. Is this one up? Yeah, this one's online as well. There's a little bit of up and down. Look at these amplitudes over here, way higher uh, than the other readings here. The other readings were like 0 0.02. These are 246. So this one's working. At least we have uh, one tilt meter to look at. But as far as the summit goes, we have you know, no clue. Uh, seismograph station here pretty quiet not seeing a whole lot of earthquake activity out at all all right so uh, let's get back here to the, the map Alaska area a couple smaller earthquakes up there but really nothing of major interest for now I mean if you look on the model here there's lots of earthquake activity uh, for a 24-hour period and half of that some deeper movement quakes out here all over the place so i have a feeling by morning time we'll probably be talking about some larger earthquake activity out here somewhere uh, the question is where where's it going to be nothing above 2.5 out here across the west coast pretty quiet uh, all microquake activity up and down the board there today uh, space weather activity as expected here minimal at best uh, and i talked about this this morning here the sunspot area is losing its complexity even more so on the latest update here so um that 25 percent chance for flaring activity is probably uh, uncalled for none of those sunspots there harbor any potential for uh anything stronger than maybe a upper sea flare but uh, that's about it so we got to watch uh, the far side of the sun and see what's coming around the bend. This update put out uh, today, it looks like. This is the image, uh, most recent image. Uh, far side of the sun is going to be right here. Earth-facing side with all these sunspots, but they're all starting to diminish. Uh, not a whole lot coming around the eastern limb right now. So this area, all these areas will advance here across the eastern limb and be visible on the earth facing side of the sun here in the coming oh i don't know maybe five days or so uh this regional sunspot but it looks like uh i'm not seeing a whole lot out there uh in the near term in terms of uh, any uh anything to watch for pretty quiet out there there's a more active region out here on the western limb uh that's off of sunspot uh the sunspot group here Barely see it, but I think this is the more complex region that's producing that uh, that brighter image there on the UV filter. Uh, so that's probably a um, possibility of seeing some stronger flaring from that region. But that's out of sight, out of mind. Uh, there's a couple of prominences out there. Really nothing major for now. Um, Aurora activity, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot there in the, in the uh, Aurora department. And that is uh, that is that. We'll have to wait and see if we get some uh, newer sunspots coming around the bend. Uh, not a whole lot of severe weather coming up right now. I think a lot of folks here are watching closely uh, potential hurricane hitting the Florida area uh, next week. Now, let's check out this latest model and see what the GFS model is showing. Uh, it's still showing a path here over Florida, but the thing I'm noticing compared to this morning's update is that they have this hurricane parked. We're traveling further west here across the Yucatan area, Mexico, um, which will basically, you know, bring that strength of the hurricane down uh, and then brings it back over uh, the Gulf of Mexico open waters. But by then, um, 
it should be a disorganized system, not super powerful. But man, there's a quite a bit of rainfall associated with that tropical system. Uh, so either way, it looks like Florida is going to get hit. Um, but then again, you got this position. Where is it going to be? Uh, if it doesn't go over land here, then we're talking about a stronger hurricane um, hitting the Florida area. Uh, let's see what we got here from the National Hurricane Center with regards to this uh, f this uh, tropical formation here. Uh, we got a, a decent chance here of seeing that within the next two days um, and even more so in the next seven days, 80 and 90 percent chance. So things are going to start kicking up out here. Um, not a whole lot in terms of weather models right now. We would have to check out... The tropical tidbits page here and I believe it's going to be this one so here's this wow look at the spaghetti models it looks even more crazy than what it did last night and this morning here it's just all over the place right uh, and that's a lot of uncertainty on where this hurricane will venture off to next it looks like it could wobble back and forth here uh, maybe going over to the Yucatan. And this is what I'm talking about. If it goes over this landmass, we're going to talk about it shredding and weakening substantially before moving off to the Northeast. Uh, I think that'd be the best case for Florida. But if it stays open like this uh, over open water with minimal um, land um, hovering, so to speak, then uh, that will be that will remain a stronger hurricane, and that's something Florida will have to. Uh, uh, watch out for um, you know this these are just spaghetti models that different weather models are picking up on on where this tropical system will head off to uh, we do know one thing it's trending upwards in terms of the strength of the hurricane looks like one model here reaching the category four majority of them category three category two one model just showing a tropical storm but i highly doubt that it's going to be a it's got a decent chance here for development. So we'll have to watch it, see where um, this leads to in the coming days, see what the weather models are going to pick up on here. Um, either way, I think it's going to hit Florida with quite a bit of rainfall. Uh, after that, looks like a big time cool down there for a good portion of the country. These blue lines here indicating some cooler air coming down from the uh, Canada area. And um, California, we're still waiting on a decent system out here. There's just been these little weaky, wimpy station or um, systems that come out and uh, bring some heavier rainfall to the coastline in Oregon and Washington. But for the Sacramento Valley here, so far, I've only picked up, I think, a quarter of an inch of rain from all of these systems here outside of Chico. So that is absolutely brutal. Uh, we need some systems out here across the West Coast that are going to bring us uh, some decent rain and snow. And uh, I don't see anything near term. This is a ways into the future here, the end of November. So we'll have to watch that and see what plays out. All right. Uh, what else we got here? Anything major going on across these seismograph stations? Not for now. Pretty quiet out there. Uh, aside from that, folks, um, member drawing coming up on the 15th. So we got three more days here before we pull out a winner for our monthly drawing. It's something we've been doing here for uh, over two years now where we uh, give away some prizes there to our members. So if you're not a member, jump on board. Uh, you get uh, some extra emojis, extra icons, um, special member videos only. And, uh, of course, some monthly drawing that kicks off every 15th of the month. Uh, it's coming up here in just uh, just a couple days. Getting better here, folks, with my voice. But it's it's lingering. It's one of those uh, lingers. Something I haven't had in probably, oh, I don't know, 10 years or more. Maybe 15 years. Out of all the hundreds and thousands of videos I've done here, you can go back on any of them and see that... Uh, I never sounded like this. It's it's a really weird feeling. Um, just a case of bronchitis. That is, I've tried everything. A lot of vitamin C, a lot of 
uh, herbal teas, a lot of uh, recommendations there from all the viewers and and whatnot. And uh, just kind of waiting for this to be over with. Which eventually it will be. Uh, one earthquake there on the Puerto Rico Trench. 3.2. That's in the last hour. But uh, we'll keep an eye on things out here, folks. A lot of deeper activity out here in the last 24 hours around this region specifically. Uh, we'll watch for some larger activity here overnight. We'll see you guys back out here in the morning. Uh, stay safe out there. Have a good one.